Hello class, my name is Daryl Perkins and today I will be informing you on the high incidence disabilities and low incidence disabilities. The high incidence disabilities I will be discussing is emotional or behavioral disorders. An emotional and behavioral disorder is an emotional disability characterized by the following. An inability to build or maintain satisfactory interpersonal relationship with peers and or teachers. For preschool age children, this would include other care providers. Some of the most common examples of these diagnoses include anxiety disorders, bipolar, eating, obsessive compulsive, and psychotic disorder. Ways that I will deal with students with high in incidence disability is by keeping class rules. I believe maintaining order and establishing your authority will let the students know your stance because many students come from different backgrounds. Some come from homes that with both parents, some come from single parent homes. Some come from where parents work all day and they don't really have a, a, like a strict uh, rule base at their house. So when they come to my classroom, I'll make sure that I give that order within my classroom. Another way I would deal with this is fair treatment for all. I will not show favoritism at in my class. I will celebrate each win to each student. If students don't get that motivational push from home, I want to make sure they get that in my classroom. So I encourage each student to uh, pass their classes and pass in my class. And when they do, I want to make sure that I celebrate them. Uh, depending on the grade level, the gifts or uh, different things that I will do within my classroom to make them uh, feel like what they did was right. Another thing, uh, uh, thing I want to talk about is low incidence disabilities. Low incidence disability is defined as a severe disabling condition with an expected incidence rate of less than 1% of total statewide enrollment in special, special education. Low incidence dis disabilities are hard of hearing, deafness, visual impairment, ortho orthopedic impairment, and deaf and blindness. Uh, ways that I would deal with this in my uh, classroom is simple. I would have students sit up front in class, those that can't really see. Uh, I know some students could be embarrassed uh, because they can't see, but I'll make it a cool way for everybody to sit in the front, or even just to make everybody feel equal, just make everybody come a little closer so that uh, students won't feel singled out. Another thing I would do is uh, use, a, use the whiteboard quite often. I know the world is getting way more technical, so of course, like use my iPad or uh, something like that to make the students feel, uh, run, to make sure uh, to, sh to secure their success in what they do. And uh, one thing I'll do too is write a lot and have them write as well and use hand signals to make sure uh, that they understand what I'm saying. And if they don't, they'll be able to raise their hand and ask questions.